What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John Place here and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can make your own Super NES Classic without having to pay an exorbitant amount of money to scalpers. Oh, by the way, it's not this. It's this. So the Super NES, SNES, Super NES went on sale Tuesday, August 22nd at 3 a.m. for Best Buy and Amazon. It was up there for a few minutes and then at 1 p.m. it was released on Walmart and by 1.01 p.m. they were sold out. Target released it at 1.20 p.m. By 1.23 p.m. they were sold out. GameStop announced that they had in-store pre-orders so if you happen to be living next to one over the next 10 minutes you were able to get your hands on one. So if you didn't have a chance to get a SNES classic edition of your own you may want to take matters in your own hands like I am now because I'm a little upset. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you could turn a tiny $5 computer into a modern game console that could play your favorite retro games on your home TV in up to 4K. What a time to be alive. The whole project will cost you a little under 30 bucks, it's the size of a SNES game itself, and this is a modified version of a method posted on howchew.com for the original NES cartridge. I'm gonna go over all the parts you need for this. I'll leave a link to all of them on Amazon in the description down below. So that makes it really easy for you to put it all together yourself. The first thing you need is a SNES game. I'm gonna be using my copy of Super Mario World that I got from a classic game store, but you get a cheap sports game or a broken game on eBay for under five bucks. Next, you need a $5 Raspberry Pi Zero. It's a tiny computer that's gonna run our entire system. You need a class 10 micro SD card, I'd recommend eight gigs or higher. Our operating system and games will be stored on it. A micro USB to USB double cable. The double is for adding more games in the future or local multiplayer. If it isn't too much of a worry, you can get away with a single one. A micro USB extension cable, this is for plug and play power. A mini HDMI to HDMI adapter, to output our image to play on a monitor or TV of our choice in up to 4K, a micro USB cable for power, a USB controller, I'm going to be using a SNES controller, a regular old USB power brick for the wall, at least 2.1 amps, most of which come with like common smartphones nowadays, and lastly, an old USB thumb drive laying around. This is gonna be for transferring games to the system. The Pi for some reason doesn't work best with new 3.0 drives, and it can't provide enough power for large external drives, so just a tiny old USB, preferably with the LED light on it, that's all you need. Now for software. I'm gonna be going over the process for both PC and Mac. For Mac, it's as simple as Pi. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. You'll need two things, RetroPie and PyBaker. Download both of these files. I'll have a link to my page on my site where you can find both of these links, but a quick Google search should probably suffice. Now, let's get prepping. Open Apple Pie Baker. It's gonna ask for your admin password. Enter it and the program will open. Your SD card should appear on the left. Click to highlight it, then click Restore Backup. Choose your RetroPie.img file. Select open and the program will take care of everything and usually automatically unmount the SD card. On PC, it's gonna be pretty similar. Download RetroPie for the Pi Zero and extract it. You'll also wanna download Win32 Disk Imager. Now open Win32 Disk Imager, choose the image file that you just unzipped and the correct external drive. Now click write. My first time doing this, I got an error saying access is denied, but that's because I didn't format the drive correctly first. Now, we put it all together and make sure everything is set up right before installing it into this tiny little cartridge. Plug in your micro USB into the Pi, plug in your USB splitter into the middle port. For some reason, when I plugged mine into the far one, my controller wasn't seen. I'm not too sure why. In the far USB, plug in the extension and the mini HDMI adapter plugs into the last port. Now plug in the HDMI, the USB controller, and lastly, the micro USB cable into the micro USB extension for your power. If all goes correctly, the green LED will be lit. Your screen will flash with a bunch of code, a few splash screens, and you'll be prompted to configure your controller. Input the settings for controls. If the Pi says that it can't see the controller, make sure it's plugged into the USB in the middle port on the Pi, and then try rebooting. Once you get to the RetroPie settings, scroll down and select RasPi Config. This will open a blue screen, select Advanced Options, then when hovering over Expand File System, just hit right on the D-pad, and then you're gonna select it with B. Now, reboot the system. 
Now take your thumb drive and format it to either FAT32 or NTFS and create a folder in there in all lowercase called RetroPie. Now plug it into the splitter and the light is going to blink on the thumb drive. And it's going to do this for a while too. I'd say wait for about 5 minutes. Next, plug it into your computer. You're going to see that the thumb drive on the RetroPie folder has some new folders. Navigate to the ROMs folder and there's a bunch more folders. This is where you put the appropriate ROMs into the folders. Now of course you don't only need to put in SNES ROMs, you can run over 28 systems, I mean most of these I've never even heard of before, but you don't need to delete these folders, they're just going to serve as placeholders for importing files. I'm not going to tell you where you can obtain ROMs for legal reasons, but I'm sure a Google search can help you. Safely eject the drive and plug it into the Pi. It's going to blink a whole bunch. This means that it's importing the files. Once it's done, you can pull it out. At this point, you should be able to play a bunch of games with no problem. So if you want to call it quits here, you're fine. You have RetroPie up and running. I'm going to go over how to install all of these parts into the one SNES cartridge. For this, you're either going to need a Dremel or a sharp X-Acto knife and you're also going to need some mounting tape or hot glue. You're also going to need a SNES security screwdriver. I have one in my iFixit kit as a 3.8mm but I'll leave a link down below so you can get one yourself. Take out these two screws and open up the game. You get to see the glorious retro style of what games used to look like. Now, to get the Pi and all of its wires, you're going to need to cut out a good amount of the insides away. This is what it looks like once you cut out the left and right side. We're going to be installing the Pi on the left side, so you might need to cut a tiny bit extra for it to fit with the SD card. Of course, never give it a lot of force to make something fit. Next, we're going to put the USBs in place, and we're going to mark the bottom area to cut out for the area for them to stick out of. We're also going to mark the area for the micro USB extension. With all three in place, crazy enough, it should line up to the exact middle of this one circle that's in the plastic at the bottom of the cartridge. I don't know if every SNES game has this, but mine sure did. I'm also going to mark the area on the side of the game for the HDMI, as it's too large to fit in the bottom. When laying the cartridge top back on, you're going to see that it needs to be cut away as well. You're going to end up cutting the entire area down of the top cartridge for all three adapters to fit. Of course, you don't need to go past the area that you didn't cut on the bottom. For the HDMI, you need to trim the top area of the cartridge as well as this small holder. Now that all of our cuts are in place, it's time to lay the parts in place. I'll be using hot glue, but if you chose mounting tape, just make sure it's not too tall. With the Pi secure, it's time to lay down the HDMI as well as the other wires. When it's all done, it's gonna look like this. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but it works. Now, all that's left is to lay the top piece on, make any final trimmings for the top to fit, attach your two screws, and enjoy your new retro gaming glory. That's all there is to it. I know that this is a little different from what I normally do on the channel, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Till next time, Austin John out.